Let's now bring in uh, my Sky News colleague and former Labor Minister, Graham Richardson, on this. Graham, this is, well, it's huge news. It's breaking news. What's your response to the ICAC's findings? <clears throat> well, my first response is that I'm saddened, um, you know, because um, Gladys Berejiklian had a, uh, a stellar career. Uh, she, uh, uh, was, she governed New South Wales well. I don't think any Labor person can really dispute that. Uh, she governed New South Wales well for a long time. And uh, it's just unfortunate that uh, uh, her name has to be uh, associated with a grub like th this bloke from Wagga. How big of a fall from grace is this? You know how popular Gladys Berejiklian once was. She was touted as the woman who saved Australia at one point. That, that was the headline. And the day that she stood down, you'd remember people in her electorate. They were in tears. People were crying. Everyone mm. was so upset. So, you know, a few years later, how things have changed. Yeah, it's, it's really tragic um, because, uh, you know, Gladys was an unbelievably popular leader um, and... We had no thought of defeating her uh, for years because, uh, you know, we knew how popular she was. And that popular popularity uh, just endured. It continued no matter what. Uh, and I think uh, this is going to do a, a lot of damage to her. Uh, and I take no glee uh, or, or satisfaction from that. The ICAC said that she did indeed act corruptly and we can likely expect that she will appeal this decision. How do you think that would stand up? Well, yeah, that's, it's impossible for us to, to judge what a court's going to do. Um, I, I wouldn't even try. Uh, all I can say is uh, I'm stunned at the decision and so uh, I, uh, I, I, I really um, wish her well. I, I don't wish ill... Uh, for Gladys Berejiklian, and I'm not a friend of hers. In fact, our relationship's been, a personal relationship's been quite prickly, but I'd, I'd still <clears throat> like to see uh, uh, her get through this because um, she has made a great contribution. No one can dispute that. And you don't like to see people who've been in the position to contribute like she has uh, falling on, uh, on times such as these. The ICAC has not recommended that this go to the DPP in terms of laying any criminal charges. Is that one thing that Gladys Berejiklian uh, can take comfort in right now? Oh, I think she can take considerable comfort in that. Uh, I certainly would were I her. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very important that uh, you don't get charged because even if you're found not guilty, uh, you know, being dragged through the courts is always a very unpleasant experience where everything that you didn't like in your personal life is laid out on the table and, and is open to everyone. Uh, I don't wish that on, on anybody, let alone Gladys. This whole investigation, the entire uh, ICAC inquiry, some have labelled it simply just a kangaroo court. Uh, we've heard from some of her former colleagues uh, in the last 20 minutes saying uh, just how ridiculous this whole process is. But it raises an another question about ICAC's powers. In your view, how much uh, power should the corruption watchdog have? Well, I'm, I'm not in favour of the, this corruption watchdog. Never have been. Um, it, it abuses its power. Um, it always has. It always will. You know, when you give the amount of power uh, to an organisation that we've given to ICAC, you can always expect some abuse of it. And there's been plenty of that over time. Plenty. So I, uh, I'm, I'm someone who's a, a, a sceptic about uh, ICAC in the first place, and I would never have given it the power it has. Is this a stain against the Liberal Party in this state? Now, we know, obviously, this is not just uh, pertaining to the Liberal Party. The Labor Party's had its issues over the years. But, of course, this is not the first time something like this has happened to a Liberal Premier or a former Liberal Premier within New South Wales. What does it mean for the brand moving forward? It never helps. Um, but by the same token, uh, the Liberal Party brand is so strong, uh, as is Labor's, that you, you're not going to do... Terrible, a terrible damage to it uh, because one person, no matter how important that person may have been, uh, gets into trouble. Uh, I, I don't think it'll damage the Liberal brand very much at all. The Liberals will continue doing what they do.
should she have resigned earlier? If you look at it in hindsight, when she was first called to give uh, evidence at the commission, should it have been all over back then as opposed to waiting for a few years later to make the announcement she'd resigned in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of New South Wales lockdown? Should she have just called it earlier in hindsight? Well, you know, it's always easier in hindsight to look at these things and, and say probably yes, um, but uh, you don't get the chance to undo the past. Uh, she, she did what she did. Uh, she continued on with, uh, you've got to say, the great strength she's always shown. She's a very strong woman. And uh, as I said, I take no glee in what's now happening. What happens to her next? Of course, we know she's an executive at Optus and she's expected to remain in that position, though we are expecting a statement uh, to come through from Optus, uh, hopefully in the next 45 minutes or so. But what happens to her now? What happens to her career? Well, I don't think she's going to have much of a career from now on. Do you think, sorry, think she'll, be, do you think she'll go? Do you think she'll go from Optus? Yeah, I think uh, Optus will will not put, uh, make, make it seem like this, but uh, she'll resign. I'd be very surprised if Optus kept her on. OK, so I mean, where does that leave her? Uh, there's no joy for Gladys, no matter which direction she looks. And I think that's really sad. As I said, I take no glee or satisfaction from it. But uh, Gladys Berejiklian has hit a dead end. So even you, you're really confident, though, that Optus just can't keep her on? I mean... Would there be reason, though, for them to continue with, with her as she's done a, a seemingly good job at Optus by all accounts? I think after a finding like this, it doesn't matter what the company is, they can't keep you on. And I don't believe they will. That, uh, you know, she'll just resign and, and Optus will, will, will give her a, a great send-off. They won't um, uh, say, oh, yeah, we got in there first and told her to go. That won't happen. Um, but that is what will happen in reality. I just won't tell you. Uh, in terms of ICAC, we know this has taken 18 months for them to hand down this report, which is uh, seemingly a very long time. And yesterday, the New South Wales government uh, has agreed to introduce new laws whereby any deadline would be self-imposed. They want to try and tighten that deadline. But 18 months, that's, that's a long time for something like this, do you think? It's a long time to put your life on hold and that's what's in effect happened. Uh, ICAC's always been notoriously slow. I mean, I've never been happy with ICAC's existence, let alone um, its performance. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'd just get rid of the bloody thing um, uh, and, and I'd say to the police, this is your job, do it. Um, uh, and I think that's what should have happened. But nonetheless, we've got ICAC, uh, I guess it'll stay. Uh, I, uh, I think it could probably deal with some reform and uh, this uh, whole episode may give us the impetus to see some of that reform occur. What sort of reform do you think? We, we heard just a short time ago from the New South Wales Premier Chris Minns. He says we must manage conflicts of interest and declare them. That was his key line there. What sort of reforms do you think are needed? I think you, you, we've got to make it much harder for um, uh, any MP to hide... Uh, what their interests are. At the moment, it's still pretty easy. Uh, you know, you, if you're a, a person who doesn't mind cutting a corner, uh, then uh, you can hide whatever you like. And so, I, well, not quite whatever you like, but it's, it's not too difficult to hide interests. And uh, I think that's a, a, a bad thing. Uh, I don't like the idea of uh, politicians having no private life, but I think that's the position you're in in the modern era. You forget about privacy uh, because your whole life is, is open to investigation. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a pretty tough life. Before we, we let you go, how do you think Gladys Berejiklian would be feeling right now? These allegations are, well, they're extremely, extremely serious. And at the time, she put a, her faith in a man, Daryl Maguire, that she uh, said was her num numero uno. That's how she referred to him. What do you think she'd be thinking right now? Oh, I think she'd be thinking what a mug she was to be taken in by a clown like him. Yeah, you'd think so uh, too. Well, uh, look, you know, it's... What a day. I mean, these are huge allegations. Corruption findings have been found against two individuals. One of those, of course, is the former New South Wales Premier, Graeme Richardson. It's been great to speak with you. 
Thank you so much for your analysis and insight on what's a huge day in New South Wales. Pleasure.